In .NET 8, you can render Razor components statically on the server, which means that when you hit a page like this, it makes a full page request, gets a full page response, and what you see is the HTML that's been returned. And this is perfect for pages like this where we're just showing data, you know, showing a list of products. But sometimes these requests might be long running. So for example here, I've deliberately slowed down the request to fetch products with this async delay. And what that means is that the product collection here is going to be null for a period of time. So when we refresh this page, we have to wait for that to finish before we see any results. And we can see this in the dev tools very clearly. If I refresh this page and then look at the waterfall here, you can see really clearly that we were waiting for the server response for the whole second. And then the content download itself was actually pretty quick at the end of that. But you might want to show your users a loading state. So if you've seen demos of the new stream rendering attributes, then you've probably seen exactly this demo where you have a loading indicator. So in the event that the products is null, we'll show this loading indicator. Then once we have products, we'll show the list. And when you look at this in the browser, you get a completely different result. You see that the loading indicator appears first and then the page is loaded. So this is still static rendering, but the response is being streamed. And what that means is that we get a very fast initial response from the server, in this case 1.5 milliseconds, and then the content is downloaded in the same response stream, and then the resulting HTML is sent to the browser in, in that response stream, and the browser patches the DOM with the new HTML. So you might be forgiven for thinking, oh well, you know, streaming rendering is just for loading indicators, but it actually goes further than that, because what you can use it for is anything where you have kind of state that you want to stream back to the browser and show in stages. So for example, if we go to the home page here, now we've got this loading indicator. Now at the moment, this loading indicator is almost useless, because when you refresh the page, you have to wait for the progress bar to reach 100% before it shows, which is exactly what we saw a moment ago with the product list page, same kind of thing. We're waiting for the whole progress bar to be filled before we see anything. So obviously one thing we can do here is just say, well, that's fine, we'll just render this as an interactive server component. And because the progress bar is calling state has changed as it loops through the values from zero to 100, in Blazor server mode, our progress bar behaves as you would expect it to. But it feels a bit heavy handed to have to go to Blazor server just to show a progress bar. After all, if we're trying to build this site statically using static rendering, ideally we wouldn't have to turn to interactive server mode or interactive WebAssembly mode just to show this partial response from the progress bar. And that's where we can again use the attribute stream rendering. And just as we saw a moment ago, if I perform a full refresh of this page, the socket connection has gone, so we're no longer seeing a socket connection. But as you probably just saw there, when we refresh this, it, we're seeing the partial states. So what's going on? Well, it's the stream rendering that we just saw a moment ago. So now this request, again, has a very fast initial response, 1.8 milliseconds, and then the content is streamed in stages to the browser. So we actually see every single state of the progress bar, because every single bit of HTML every time that re-renders using this state has changed call here is being streamed back to the browser. So stream rendering, a really handy way in .NET 8 of having interactive pages without actually having to resort to Blazor Server or Blazor WebAssembly when really you just want a static website and a little bit of dynamic content.